Welcome back, horror lovers. Tonight, are you ready for a thrilling adventure? Get ready to be immersed in the deep woods as we bring you one hour of chilling camping and hiking tales. Gather around the campfire and prepare to be captivated by true scary stories from the depths of Reddit. Picture this, you're alone in the wilderness, surrounded by nothing but the sounds of nature. The crackling campfire casts eerie shadows on the trees, as you listen to spine-chilling accounts of encounters with mysterious creatures and unexplainable phenomena. Feel the goosebumps rise as hikers and campers recount their shocking, good night, horror fans. The first rays of dawn pierce through the dense canopy of Misty Valley, casting an eerie glow over the group of five friends. Jenny, a petite girl with a determined glint in her eyes, inhaled the crisp morning air, a shiver running down her spine. We finally made it, she whispered, her voice barely audible over the rustling leaves. Let the graduation camping trip begin. Dave, her ever-optimistic best friend, chuckled nervously. Yeah, it's beautiful, but let's not forget we're here to relax, not to have a horror movie experience. Eric, the lanky one with a mischievous grin, shrugged. Come on, Dave, don't be a buskill. We can have fun and stay safe, right? Eva, the quiet one with wide, doe eyes, nodded in agreement. This is a great chance for us to spend some time together before we all go our separate ways. Sally, the practical one, scanned the surroundings with a hint of unease. I just hope we don't encounter anything we can't handle. As they set up camp, an unsettling silence descended upon the valley. The once cheerful chatter faded, replaced by the ominous creaking of branches and the rustling of unseen creatures in the undergrowth. The air grew heavy, thick with an oppressive sense of dread. Did you hear that? Eva's voice trembled, barely a whisper. It sounded like footsteps. The others froze, straining their ears. The only sound was the relentless pounding of their own hearts. It's probably just an animal, Dave said, trying to sound reassuring. But his voice lacked conviction. As darkness enveloped the valley, the feeling of being watched intensified. Shadows danced in the periphery of their vision, and the wind seemed to carry whispers of an ancient, malevolent presence. I don't like this, Sally muttered, her voice barely audible. We should leave. But before anyone could respond, a blood-curdling scream echoed through the trees. It was Eric's voice, filled with terror and pain. The friends exchanged horrified glances. Something was terribly wrong. They grabbed their flashlights and rushed towards the source of the scream, their hearts pounding in their chests. The darkness seemed to swallow them whole, and the whispers grew louder, taunting them with their impending doom. As they reached Eric's tent, they found it torn to shreds, the canvas ripped open like a gaping wound. Eric was nowhere to be seen. A cold chill swept over them. They were now alone in Misty Valley. And whatever was out there was hunting them. Panic surged through the group. The once familiar forest now felt alien and hostile, every rustle of leaves a potential threat. We have to find him. Eva's voice quivered, 
tears welling up in her eyes. We need to get out of here. Sally countered, her voice sharp with fear. It's not safe. Jenny's mind raced, torn between the urge to flee and the desperate need to find Eric. We can't just leave him, she said, her voice firm despite the tremor in her hands. We have to, Dave insisted, his usual optimism replaced by a grim determination. We're no match for whatever's out there. Reluctantly, they turned back, their flashlights cutting through the darkness, casting long, dancing shadows that seemed to mock their fear. The whispers in the wind grew louder, twisting into guttural snarls that chilled them to the bone. They stumbled through the undergrowth, branches clawing at their clothes, their breath coming in ragged gasps. The forest seemed to close in around them, the darkness pressing down with an almost physical weight. Suddenly, a piercing scream tore through the night. It was Eva, her voice filled with unimaginable terror. They spun around, their flashlights frantically searching the darkness. Eva was gone, swallowed by the shadows. A wave of nausea washed over Jenny. They were being hunted, picked off one by one. We have to run. Dave shouted, his voice hoarse. They bolted, their legs pumping, their lungs burning. The whispers turned into a cacophony of shrieks and howls, urging them on, pushing them towards their doom. They ran until they could run no more, collapsing onto the damp forest floor, their bodies racked with sobs. The darkness surrounded them, a suffocating blanket of fear. They were lost, alone, and hunted. And they knew, deep in their bones, that they might not survive the night. Huddled together on the cold, damp ground, the three remaining friends clung to each other, their bodies trembling with fear. The forest around them seemed to pulse with an unseen menace, the whispers now a constant, chilling chorus. We can't stay here, Jenny choked out, her voice thick with tears. We have to keep moving. Dave and Sally nodded, their faces pale and drawn. They rose unsteadily to their feet, their legs heavy with exhaustion and dread. As they stumbled through the darkness, the whispers grew louder, morphing into grotesque moans and cackles that echoed through the trees. The air hung heavy with the stench of decay, and the shadows seemed to reach out, grasping at their ankles. Suddenly, a twig snapped behind them. They whirled around, their flashlights illuminating a pair of glowing eyes in the darkness. A guttural growl ripped through the silence, and a monstrous figure emerged from the shadows. Its skin was pale and withered, its eyes empty sockets, and its mouth a gaping maw filled with jagged teeth. The creature lunged, its claws outstretched. Dave shoved Jenny and Sally aside, sacrificing himself to the beast. His scream was cut short, swallowed by the darkness. Jenny and Sally didn't look back. They ran, their hearts pounding in their chests, their lungs screaming for air. The creature's roars echoed behind them, a terrifying reminder of their vulnerability. They ran until they could run no more, their legs giving out beneath them. They collapsed onto the forest floor, their bodies shaking uncontrollably. They were alone now, truly alone. The whispers surrounded them, 
a symphony of despair. And they knew, with a bone-chilling certainty, that the creature was still out there, waiting, watching, hungry for its next victim. The silence that followed was deafening, broken only by the soft sobs of the two girls. The weight of their loss pressed down on them, heavy and suffocating. We have to go, Jenny whispered, her voice barely a croak. We can't stay here. Sally nodded, her eyes white with terror. They rose to their feet, their movements slow and clumsy, their bodies numb with shock. They stumbled through the forest, their flashlights casting feeble beams against the encroaching darkness. The whispers grew louder, swirling around them like a swarm of hungry insects. Suddenly, a guttural snarl echoed through the trees, followed by the sound of heavy footsteps. The creature was back, and it was close. Jenny and Sally exchanged a terrified glance. They had to find a place to hide, and fast. They spotted a hollowed-out tree trunk and scrambled inside, their bodies pressed tightly together. They held their breath, listening to the creature's heavy breathing as it stalked closer. The creature sniffed the air, its nostrils flaring. It circled the tree trunk, its claws scraping against the bark, sending shivers down their spines. Jenny and Sally squeezed their eyes shut, their hearts pounding in their chests. They could feel the creature's presence, its hot breath on their skin. The creature paused, its head tilted as if listening intently. Then, with a frustrated growl, it moved on, its footsteps fading into the distance. Jenny and Sally waited, their bodies still tense, their minds racing. They had escaped, for now, but they knew they weren't safe. The creature was still out there, and it wouldn't give up easily. They had to find a way out of this nightmare, a way to survive the horrors of Misty Valley. When the creature's heavy footsteps finally faded into the distance, Jenny and Sally dared to breathe again. The hollow of the tree trunk felt like a tomb, the air thick with the smell of damp earth and decaying leaves. We have to get out of here, Jenny whispered, her voice trembling. We can't just wait for it to come back. Sally nodded, her face pale in the dim light filtering through the leaves. But where do we go? We're lost. Jenny's mind raced searching for a glimmer of hope in the darkness. We have to find a way out of the forest, she said, her voice firmer now, fueled by a desperate determination. There has to be a road, a trail, something. They crawled out of the tree trunk, their movements cautious, their senses heightened. The rain had eased to a drizzle, but the forest remained shrouded in an oppressive gloom. As they moved deeper into the woods, the whispers grew louder, twisting into a chorus of tormented souls. The trees seemed to lean in, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers, eager to snatch them into the darkness. Suddenly, Sally gasped, her hand clutching Jenny's arm. Look, she hissed, pointing towards a clearing ahead. In the center of the clearing stood a dilapidated cabin, its windows boarded up, its door hanging open on rusty hinges. A single, flickering light emanated from within, casting long, ominous shadows across the clearing. Maybe we can find help there, Jenny said, her voice laced with a desperate hope. They approached the cabin cautiously their footsteps crunching on the damp leaves. The whispers grew louder, urging them forward,
promising sanctuary. As they reached the door, Jenny hesitated, a sense of unease washing over her. The cabin seemed to exude an aura of malevolence, as if it were a trap, a lure for unsuspecting prey. But they had no other choice. They had to take the risk. Jenny pushed open the door, and they stepped into the darkness within. The whispers grew louder, swirling around them like a vortex of fear. They were not alone in the cabin. Something was waiting for them, something lurking in the shadows. The interior of the cabin was a macabre tableau of neglect and decay. Cobwebs draped the furniture like ghostly shrouds, and the floorboards creaked ominously beneath their feet. The air hung heavy with the stench of mildew and something else, something foul and unsettling. The flickering light revealed a room filled with grotesque shadows, dancing and twisting in a sinister ballet. A cold draft sneaked through the broken windows, carrying with it the mournful whispers of the forest. Jenny and Sally moved deeper into the cabin, their flashlights cutting through the darkness, revealing a scene of unimaginable horror. A figure sat hunched in a corner, its back to them. Its ragged clothes hung loosely on its emaciated frame, and its long, matted hair obscured its face. Hello? Jenny's voice cracked, the sound echoing through the empty cabin. The figure didn't move. Is anyone there? Sally called out, her voice trembling. Slowly, the figure turned, its face bathed in the flickering light. Its skin was stretched taut over its skull, its eyes sunken and hollow, its lips pulled back in a grotesque grin. Jenny and Sally gasped, their blood running cold. The figure was not human. It was a skeletal monstrosity, its bones protruding through its flesh, its limbs twisted and deformed. The creature rose to its feet, its movements jerky and unnatural. It let out a low, guttural growl, its eyes fixated on the two girls. Jenny and Sally stumbled backward, their hearts pounding in their chests. They had to get out of there, but the door seemed miles away. The creature lunged, its skeletal fingers reaching out for them. Jenny and Sally screamed, their voices echoing through the empty cabin, swallowed by the darkness. They scrambled backward, their feet tangling in the debris that littered the floor. The creature's skeletal fingers grazed Jenny's arm, leaving a trail of icy cold in their wake. Run! Sally screamed, her voice a desperate plea. They turned and fled, their lungs burning, their legs heavy with terror. The creature's cackles echoed behind them, a chilling soundtrack to their desperate escape. They burst out of the cabin, the rain stinging their faces like a thousand tiny needles. The forest seemed to pulsate with the creature's malevolent presence, the whispers now a chorus of triumphant screams. They ran blindly, their flashlights bouncing wildly, casting grotesque shadows that danced and writhed in the darkness. The ground beneath their feet was treacherous, roots and rocks tripping them, tearing at their clothes and skin. Suddenly, Sally cried out, her foot caught in a tangle of vines. She fell to the ground, her ankle twisting at an unnatural angle. Sally! Jenny screamed, turning back to help her friend. But it was too late. The creature emerged from the cabin, its skeletal form silhouetted against the flickering light. 
It moved with a horrifying grace, its claws clicking on the damp earth. Jenny hesitated, torn between helping Sally and saving herself. But the creature was upon them, its putrid breath washing over them. Go! Sally sobbed, her voice thick with pain and fear. Don't let it get you too. Jenny's heart shattered, but she knew Sally was right. She couldn't let her friend's sacrifice be in vain. With a final, tearful glance at Sally, Jenny turned and ran, her sobs mingling with the rain and the wind. The creature's triumphant roar echoed through the forest, a chilling promise of more terror to come. Jenny ran until her lungs burned and her legs ached, the relentless pursuit of the creature fueling her desperate flight. The forest seemed to twist and contort around her, the trees morphing into grotesque figures that reached out with gnarled branches, their whispers a symphony of despair. She stumbled, her foot catching on a gnarled root, sending her sprawling onto the rain-soaked ground. A sharp pain shot through her ankle, but she couldn't stop. The creature's guttural growls echoed closer, its presence a suffocating weight on her chest. With a desperate cry, she scrambled to her feet, ignoring the searing pain in her ankle. She limped forward, her breath coming in ragged gasps, her vision blurred by tears and rain. Through the trees, she saw a glimmer of hope, the road. The familiar asphalt ribbon stretched out before her, a lifeline leading away from the horrors of the forest. She pushed herself harder, her muscles screaming in protest. The creature's roars grew louder, its pursuit relentless. Finally, she reached the road, her lungs heaving, her body trembling. She turned, her flashlight beam sweeping across the darkness. The creature stood at the edge of the forest, its skeletal form silhouetted against the moonlit sky. Its empty eyes locked with hers, and a chilling grin spread across its face. It let out a triumphant roar, its voice echoing through the valley. Jenny didn't wait. She turned and ran towards her car, her heart pounding in her chest. She fumbled with the keys, her hands shaking uncontrollably. The engine roared to life, and she slammed the car into gear, tires screeching as she sped away from the forest. She didn't look back, but she could feel the creature's presence, its malevolent gaze burning into her back. She was safe. For now. But she knew she would never forget the horrors of Misty Valley, the screams of her friends, the relentless pursuit of the creature. She was a survivor, but she was also forever haunted. The highway stretched out before her, a ribbon of asphalt cutting through the darkness. Jenny's hands gripped the steering wheel, her knuckles white with tension. The headlights pierced the night, revealing nothing but the endless expanse of road and the occasional gnarled tree, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. The silence in the car was oppressive, broken only by the rhythmic thumping of her own heartbeat and the soft hum of the engine. Jenny's mind was a maelstrom of fear and guilt, the images of her friend's faces flashing before her eyes. She glanced in the rearview mirror, her breath catching in her throat. A figure sat hunched in the back seat, its face hidden in shadow. Who's there? She whispered, her voice trembling. The figure didn't move. Jenny's heart hammered against her ribs. She tried to focus on the road, but the figure's presence was a constant distraction a chilling reminder that she wasn't truly alone. She reached for her phone, her fingers fumbling with the buttons. She dialed 911, 
her voice shaking as she explained all horror she had witnessed. The dispatcher on the other end of the line assured her that help was on the way. But Jenny couldn't shake the feeling that it was too late, that the creature from the forest was still with her, lurking in the shadows of her car. She drove on, her eyes darting between the road and the rearview mirror. The figure remained motionless, its presence a suffocating weight in the confined space. As she approached the outskirts of town, the figure shifted, its head slowly turning towards her. Jenny's breath hitched. She couldn't see its face, but she could feel its gaze, cold and predatory, pouring into her. Fear nodded her, a primal terror that threatened to consume her. She had escaped the forest, but the nightmare was far from over. Adrenaline coursed through Jenny's veins as she slammed on the brakes, skidding to a halt in front of the brightly lit police station. She burst out of the car, her lungs heaving, her voice raw from screaming. Help! She cried, tears streaming down her face. My friends, they're in danger. A stern-faced officer rushed towards her, his expression softening as he took in her disheveled appearance and frantic demeanor. Calm down, miss, he said gently. Tell me what happened. Through choked sobs, Jenny recounted the horrifying events of the night, the disappearance of Eric, the gruesome deaths of Eva and Sally, Dave's selfless sacrifice, and her own harrowing escape from the clutches of the skeletal creature. The officer listened intently, his brow furrowed in concern. We'll send a search party to Misty Valley immediately, he assured her. We'll do everything we can to find your friends. Relief washed over Jenny, but it was quickly replaced by a gnawing sense of dread. She knew that time was of the essence. Every second that passed felt like an eternity, the image of her friends trapped in the clutches of the creature haunting her thoughts. Hours later, the search party returned empty-handed. The forest had yielded no trace of her friends, no sign of the creature that had terrorized them. Despair washed over Jenny, a cold wave of hopelessness. Her friends were gone, swallowed by the darkness of Misty Valley. Driven by a desperate need for closure, Jenny returned to the forest the next day, accompanied by a reluctant park ranger. They scoured the woods, their footsteps echoing through the eerie silence. But the forest remained stubbornly silent, its secrets buried deep within its tangled depths. As dusk approached, they stumbled upon a clearing, a place of twisted beauty and unsettling stillness. In the center stood an ancient, gnarled tree, its branches reaching towards the sky like skeletal claws. A sense of foreboding washed over Jenny. She knew, with a chilling certainty, that this was where it had all begun, where the nightmare had taken root. Suddenly, the whispers returned, swirling around them like a malevolent wind. The trees seemed to lean in, their leaves rustling with a sinister anticipation. And then, from the depths of the forest, a figure emerged. It was the creature, its skeletal form bathed in the fading light, its empty eyes burning with an unholy hunger. Jenny's heart pounded in her chest. She had faced the creature once before, and she had survived. But this time, she was now alone. The ranger drew his weapon, his hand trembling. Stay back, he shouted, his voice echoing through the clearing. The creature snarled, its teeth gleaming in the twilight. It lunged, its claws outstretched, its movements a blur of bone and shadow. 
The ranger fired, the gunshot shattering the silence. The creature stumbled, a guttural cry escaping its lips. But it didn't fall. It turned its gaze towards Jenny, its eyes blazing with an unholy rage. And then, with a chilling shriek, it charged. The afternoon sun bled through the canopy of the ancient forest, casting twisted shadows that danced and writhed on the forest floor. The air hung heavy, thick with the scent of damp earth and decaying leaves. A bone-chilling silence enveloped the woods, broken only by the occasional snap of a twig or the rustle of unseen creatures in the undergrowth. Emma, a seasoned park ranger, hiked along the winding trail, her boots sinking into the soft earth. Despite her years of experience, a sense of unease prickled at the back of her neck. The forest felt different today, its usual symphony of birdsong replaced by an oppressive quiet. The crackle of her radio startled her. Emma, do you copy? Her boss's voice crackled through the static. Loud and clear, Chief, she replied, her voice steady despite the growing knot in her stomach. We've got a hiker, Ben, lost in the back country. We received a distress call about an hour ago, but we've lost contact. Emma's heart hammered in her chest. The back country was treacherous, even for experienced hikers. And now, with darkness approaching, I'm on my way, she said, her resolve firm. Be careful, Emma, her boss warned. Ben said he saw something out there, something that scared him badly. He said it wasn't human. A cold shiver ran down Emily's spine. Ben was a seasoned outdoorsman, not easily spooked. What could have terrified him so? I'll be cautious, she assured him, shouldering her backpack and setting off into the deepening gloom. As she ventured deeper into the woods, the sunlight dwindled, replaced by an eerie twilight. The trees loomed overhead, their gnarled branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. The forest floor was a tangle of roots and fallen logs, each step a potential misstep into the unknown. Emily's unease grew with every passing minute. The silence was deafening, punctuated only by the distant creak of branches and the skittering of unseen creatures. She felt eyes on her, watching her from the shadows, but whenever she turned, there was nothing there. Just the encroaching darkness, and the growing sense that she was now alone. Deeper into the woods, Emma stumbled upon an abandoned campsite. The tent stood open, its flaps flapping in the breeze like the ragged wings of a wounded bird. A cold shiver ran down her spine as she approached, the air thick with the stench of decay. Inside, Ben's belongings lay scattered, a scene of frantic disarray. A torn backpack, a crumpled map, a half-eaten granola bar, all whispered a tale of sudden flight. Emma's eyes fell upon a weathered notebook, its pages filled with Ben's hurried handwriting. Day one, embarking on this adventure with excitement. The mountains are breathtaking can't wait to summit. Day two, got a bit turned around, but no worries. I've got my map and compass. I'll find my way back. Day three, I keep feeling like something's watching me. 
I hear footsteps and whispers, but when I turn around, there's nothing there. Day 4, I'm terrified. I don't know what it is, but it's getting closer. I have to find a way out of here. The entries ended abruptly, leaving a chilling silence in their wake. Emma's skin crawled, her imagination conjuring images of unseen horrors lurking in the shadows. The forest seemed to hold its breath, waiting for her next move. Determined to find Ben, she followed the faint trail he'd left behind. Broken branches, disturbed leaves, and the occasional footprint painted a picture of a desperate escape. But as she ventured further into the heart of the woods, the signs became more sinister. Strange symbols, carved into the bark of ancient trees, mirrored the cryptic drawings in Ben's notebook. What is this? Emma whispered, her voice trembling. A cold dread settled in her stomach, a feeling she couldn't shake. The forest was no longer a place of beauty and serenity. It was a hunter's domain, and she was the prey. The cryptic symbols guided Emma deeper into the heart of the forest, each one a chilling reminder that she was venturing into the unknown. The air grew thick and oppressive, the silence broken only by the ominous creaking of branches and the distant, mournful cries of unseen creatures. She emerged from the dense undergrowth onto the shores of a vast, fog-shrouded lake. The water lay still and black, reflecting the skeletal silhouettes of the surrounding trees. A lone canoe rested on the shore, a life jacket and paddle lying discarded beside it. Ben must have used this, Emma muttered, her voice a mere whisper in the eerie stillness. A sense of urgency propelled her forward. She climbed into the canoe, her paddle cutting through the water like a knife. The lake stretched out before her, its vastness both awe-inspiring and terrifying. The fog clung to the surface, obscuring the far shore and creating an unsettling sense of isolation. The only sound was the rhythmic splash of her paddle and the occasional, chilling cry of a loon. A haunting melody drifted through the fog, a mournful lullaby that sent shivers down Emma's spine. The sound seemed to emanate from a small, shadowy island in the center of the lake. With a growing sense of dread, Emma paddled towards the island. As she drew closer, she could make out the silhouette of a dilapidated cabin, its windows gaping like empty eye sockets. The lullaby grew louder, its mournful notes twisting into a grotesque mockery of comfort. Emma beached the canoe and approached the cabin, her footsteps crunching on the damp earth. The door hung open, a gaping maw leading into darkness. She fumbled for her flashlight, its beam cutting through the gloom. The interior was a scene of utter desolation. Cobwebs draped the furniture, dust motes danced in the air, and the walls were adorned with faded photographs and peeling wallpaper. A portrait caught her eye, a young girl with haunting eyes and a melancholic smile. A sense of unease washed over Emma. The girl's gaze seemed to follow her, her smile a chilling invitation into the darkness. A floorboard creaked behind her. Emma spun around, her heart pounding in her chest. But it was too late. A heavy weight crashed into her, sending her tumbling into oblivion. A dull ache throbbed in Emma's head as she regained consciousness. She lay on a cold, damp floor, her limbs bound with coarse rope. The darkness pressed down on her, a suffocating shroud that seemed to swallow her whole. Or am I? She croaked, her voice a raspy whisper. 
The air was thick with the scent of mildew and something else, something primal and unsettling. Heavy footsteps echoed through the darkness, drawing closer with each agonizing step. A figure emerged from the shadows, its silhouette tall and distorted, its limbs unnaturally long. Its head was a featureless void, a black abyss where a face should have been. Who, who are you? Emma stammered, her voice trembling. The one Ben feared, the figure rasped, its voice a guttural crawl that sent shivers down her spine. And now, you will know it too. Panic surged through Emma. She struggled against her bonds, the ropes biting into her flesh. Don't bother, the figure sneered. No one can hear you scream. What do you want? Emma asked, her voice barely a whisper. Just a little fun, the figure chuckled, a sound that echoed through the darkness like the rattling of bones. And you're going to be part of it. Fear clawed at Emma's throat, choking back a scream. She was trapped, helpless, at the mercy of this monstrous being. The darkness seemed to pulsate around her, a living, breathing entity that threatened to consume her whole. The figure vanished, leaving Emma alone in the suffocating darkness. Her heart hammered against her ribs, the sound echoing in the silence of her prison. Despair threatened to engulf her, but a flicker of defiance sparked within her. I won't die here, she vowed her voice a mere whisper in the oppressive gloom. I will find a way out. Her eyes, adjusting to the darkness, scanned her surroundings. A sliver of moonlight filtered through a crack in the ceiling, illuminating a pile of rotting straw in the corner. Scattered across the floor were fragments of wood and loose stones. There must be something I can use, she thought, desperation fueling her determination. She inched towards the straw pile, her movements agonizingly slow. Her fingers, numb with cold, sifted through the decaying matter, searching for anything sharp or solid. A glimmer of metal caught her eye. A nail! Hope surged through her veins. She carefully extracted the rusty nail, its jagged edges a promise of escape. With painstaking effort, she began to saw at the ropes binding her wrists, the metal grating against the coarse fibers. Time stretched on, each minute an eternity. Sweat beaded on her forehead, her muscles aching with the strain. Finally, the rope gave way and her hands were free. She quickly untied her ankles, the blood rushing back into her numb feet. With newfound freedom, she crept towards the door, her ears straining for any sound. The silence was absolute, a chilling reminder of her isolation. She eased the door open a crack, peering into the pitch-black corridor beyond. There was no sign of her captor, but the darkness seemed to pulse with an unseen menace. Taking a deep breath, she stepped into the corridor, the unknown stretching before her like a gaping maw. Emma crept along the darkened passage, her bare feet padding silently against the cold stone floor. The air was thick with the stench of damp earth and something else, a foul, animalistic odor that made her stomach churn. The walls seemed to close in around her, the darkness pressing down with a suffocating weight. Suddenly, a heavy thud echoed from the other end of the corridor, followed by the sound of shuffling footsteps. Panic surged through Emma's veins. She dove into a shallow alcove, her heart pounding like a drum. 
A hulking silhouette lumbered past, its movements slow and deliberate. The creature's form was distorted in the dim light, its limbs long and gangly, its head a grotesque, misshapen mass. Emma held her breath, praying it wouldn't notice her hiding place. The footsteps faded into the distance, leaving behind a chilling silence. Emma waited, her muscles tense, her ears straining for any sound. When she was certain the coast was clear, she emerged from her hiding place, her breath coming in ragged gasps. She had to find a way out, and fast. The thought of being trapped in this subterranean nightmare with that creature sent shivers down her spine. The corridor twisted and turned, leading her deeper into the earth's bowels. She came to a fork in the path, the left branch shrouded in impenetrable darkness, the right faintly illuminated by a flickering light. Hope flared within her. She took the right path, the dim light growing stronger with each step. The passage opened into a large chamber, its walls lined with strange objects, grotesque statues, dusty tomes, and rusted tools of unknown purpose. The air hung heavy with an oppressive silence, broken only by the dripping of water from unseen crevices. A massive wooden door stood at the far end of the chamber. Emma rushed towards it, her fingers fumbling with the rusty latch. It was locked. A small keyhole taunted her, and beside it, a riddle carved into the wood. When shadows have no form, the truth will be revealed. Emma's brow furrowed. What did it mean? The answer held the key to her freedom, but the riddle's meaning remained elusive, a cruel taunt in this macabre game of survival. Emma stared at the riddle, its cryptic words echoing in her mind. When shadows have no form, the truth will be revealed. The answer seemed to dance just out of reach, taunting her with the promise of freedom. She paced the chamber, her eyes darting from one grotesque object to another. A small window high on the wall caught her attention. She pushed it open, allowing a sliver of moonlight to spill into the room. Shadows stretched and twisted across the floor, mimicking the macabre dance of the grotesque statues. And then, it hit her. When shadows have no form. She whispered, her voice filled with a sudden realization. That means midday. When the sun is directly overhead, there will be no shadows. She frantically searched for a clock. An antique timepiece hung on the wall, its hands ticking away the agonizing minutes. It was 11 a.m. One hour, she murmured, her heart pounding. I have to wait. She returned to the door, her gaze sweeping across the room once more. The red eyes of the monstrous statue seemed to glow with an eerie intensity. Curiosity and a hint of desperation drew her closer. She reached out, her fingers brushing against the cold stone eye. A low growl rumbled through the chamber. The statue shuddered, then slowly turned its head towards her. Its jaw unhinged, revealing rows of jagged teeth. Emma stumbled back, her heart leaping into her throat. The statue lurched forward, its movements jerky and unnatural. Panic clawed at her, her breath coming in ragged gasps. She glanced around frantically, searching for an escape. But there was none. She was trapped, cornered by the monstrous thing she had awakened. The creature advanced, its shadow stretching across the floor like a hungry beast. Emma closed her eyes, 
bracing for the inevitable. A tremolin surged through Emma's veins as she sprinted through the darkened forest, the guardian's chilling laughter echoing in her ears. The trees blurred past her, their branches reaching out like skeletal claws, eager to ensnare her. She stumbled over roots and rocks, her lungs burning, her heart pounding like a drum. You can't hide forever, the guardian's voice boomed through the woods, a promise of impending doom. Emma's legs ached, her muscles screaming for respite, but she dared not slow down. A glimmer of hope appeared ahead, a break in the trees, the faint outline of a road. She pushed herself harder, her breath coming in ragged gasps. As she burst into the clearing, the sudden brightness momentarily blinded her. She blinked, her eyes adjusting to the moonlight. The open road stretched before her, a path to freedom. But behind her, the guardian emerged from the tree lean, its monstrous form silhouetted against the moonlit sky. It's over, Emma, its voice hissed, a cold wind whispering through the trees. Desperation fueled her. She sprinted towards the road, her feet pounding against the asphalt. A car's headlights appeared in the distance, a beacon of hope in the encroaching darkness. She waved her arms frantically, screaming for help. The car screeched to a halt, its tires squealing against the pavement. The driver, a middle-aged man with a startled expression, rolled down his window. Are you okay? he asked, his voice laced with concern. Please, Emma gasped, her voice raw. Help us. There's something in the woods. Before she could finish, the guardian emerged from the tree lean, its grotesque form bathed in the harsh glow of the headlights. The driver's eyes widened in terror. Drive! Emma screamed. The car roared to life, leaving the guardian behind in a cloud of dust. Emma collapsed onto the back seat, her body trembling uncontrollably. She had escaped, but the memory of the guardian's chilling laughter would haunt her dreams for years to come. The cabin sagged under the weight of years, its weathered timbers creaking like a chorus of forgotten voices. The encroaching forest, a tangled mass of gnarled branches and grasping vines, seemed to yearn to reclaim the space, as if resentful of the human intrusion. The air hummed with a peculiar energy, a silent symphony of unease and anticipation. Ready, Alex? I whispered, my voice a nervous tremor in the stillness. My brother, his face pale in the fading light, nodded hesitantly. I guess, he replied, his voice a mere croak. Together, we stepped onto the porch, its boards protesting with a symphony of creaks and groans. The front door, a warped slab of wood, refused to yield easily. It took a concerted effort, a shove born of desperation, before it finally swung inward with a tortured groan. The interior was a stark contrast to the fading daylight outside. Shadows danced in the corners, their forms shifting and writhing like restless spirits. The air hung heavy with the scent of dust and mildew, a pungent reminder of the cabin's long abandonment. It's colder in here, Alex shivered, his breath misting in the dim light. I nodded, a chill creeping up my spine. It wasn't just the temperature, it was a palpable sense of dread, an unseen presence that seemed to press down on us, suffocating any sense of comfort or safety. Let's just get this over with, I muttered, my voice barely above a whisper. 
We can check the upstairs and then get out of here. Alex didn't reply, but his grip on my arm tightened. We stepped further into the cabin, each footfall echoing in the oppressive silence. The darkness seemed to swallow us whole, leaving us alone with the ghosts of the past and the chilling promise of the unknown. The door creaked shut behind us, plunging us into near-total darkness. The air inside was stale and thick, carrying the unmistakable scent of decay, like something had died here and been forgotten. My flashlight beam cut through the gloom, revealing a tableau of neglect. It's like a tomb, Alex whispered, his voice tight. Dust motes danced in the beam of light, and every surface seemed coated in a thick layer of crime. The furniture, shrouded in yellowed sheets, resembled ghostly figures hunched in the corners. Cobwebs hung like macabre tapestries, their silken strands glistening with an unnatural sheen. Let's just find the breaker box and get some lights on, I suggested, trying to keep my voice steady. We fumbled our way through the living room, the floorboards protesting under our weight. Every creak and groan echoed through the stillness, amplified by the oppressive silence. Over there, Alex pointed towards a doorway, his flashlight illuminating a dark hallway. As we ventured further in, the feeling of unease grew stronger. A draft snaked down the hallway, carrying with it a whisper of cold air and the faintest hint of something else. Something foul and ancient. You hear that? Alex's voice was barely a whisper. I strained my ears, listening intently. A low, guttural moan seemed to emanate from the walls themselves, a mournful lament that sent shivers down my spine. It's just the wind, I said, trying to convince myself as much as Alex. But the moan persisted, growing louder, more insistent. It was as if the house itself was crying out, warning us to turn back. We reached the end of the hallway, where a rickety staircase led up into darkness. Upstairs? Alex's voice was hesitant. We have to, I said, my voice firmer than I felt. We need to know what we're dealing with. With a deep breath, I placed my foot on the first step. It groaned under my weight, and a cascade of dust and cobwebs rained down on us. Whatever's up there, Alex whispered, his voice thick with fear, it doesn't want to be found. With each creaking step, we ascended into the suffocating darkness of the upper floor. The air grew heavier, thick with the dust of decades. The only light came from our flickering flashlights, casting long, dancing shadows on the walls. What was she doing up here? Alex whispered, his voice a hushed rasp. We pushed open a door, the hinges protesting with a shriek that echoed through the silence. Inside, the attic lay bathed in the cold glow of the moon. Dust motes danced in the air, illuminated by the ethereal light. And then we saw them. Dozens of antique dolls, their porcelain faces frozen in expressions of eerie serenity, lined the shelves and floor. Their eyes, wide and unblinking, seemed to follow our every move. They're watching us, Alex breathed, his voice thick with unease. I nodded, unable to shake the feeling that we were being observed. A cold draft swept through the room, stirring the dust and sending a shiver down my spine. Let's check the basement, I said, my voice tight. Maybe we can find the breaker box down there. The descent into the basement was even more unsettling. The air grew damp and heavy, the smell of mildew clinging to our clothes. 
The stone walls were slick with moisture, and the only light came from our flashlights, casting grotesque shadows that danced and writhed like living things. As we reached the bottom of the stairs, we were met with a sight that chilled us to the bone. Strange symbols, etched into the walls with what looked like blood, glowed with an eerie luminescence. They seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy, their cryptic message a chilling enigma. What does it mean? Alex asked, his voice hushed with awe and fear. I shook my head, my heart pounding in my chest. I don't know, I admitted, but I don't think we're supposed to be here. As night fell, the cabin's atmosphere grew even more oppressive. The wind held outside, its mournful cries echoing through the walls. The trees cast long, ominous shadows, their branches reaching towards the windows like skeletal fingers. We huddled by the fireplace, the crackling flames providing little comfort against the encroaching darkness. The shadows danced on the walls, their forms shifting and twisting, whispering secrets we didn't want to hear. What are we going to do? Alex's voice was barely a whisper. I looked at him, my own fear reflected in his eyes. We're going to survive the night, I said, my voice firmer than I felt. And then we're getting out of here. But as the hours ticked by, and the darkness deepened, a chilling realization dawned on me. We weren't alone in this cabin. Something was watching us, something ancient and malevolent. And it was waiting for us to make a mistake. A sudden sound shattered the uneasy quiet, a slow, deliberate thud 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 from the floor above. Our heads snapped up, eyes wide in the flickering firelight. What was that? Alex's voice was barely a whisper, his grip on my arm tightening. Upstairs, I managed, my heart hammering in my chest. Someone's up there. Or something. We exchanged a look of dread, then slowly rose to our feet. Each step on the creaking stairs felt like an eternity the sound echoing through the silent house like a death knell. The air grew colder as we ascended, a chill that seeped into our bones. At the top of the stairs, the attic door stood slightly ajar, a sliver of moonlight spilling onto the landing. A cold draft snaked out, carrying with it the scent of dust and something else. Something that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand on end. Do we... do we have to go in? Alex's voice trembled, his fear palpable. I swallowed hard, my mouth suddenly dry. We have to know, I said, my voice surprisingly steady. We can't ignore it. With a deep breath, I pushed the door open. The attic was bathed in an eerie moonlight, casting long, distorted shadows across the floor. And then we saw them. The dolls. They were no longer neatly arranged on the shelves. They lay scattered across the floor, their porcelain faces twisted in grotesque expressions. Their eyes, once blank and lifeless, now seemed to follow our every move, filled with a malevolent intelligence. They moved, Alex whispered, his voice hoarse with terror. A cold shiver ran down my spine. The dolls, once mere objects, now seemed imbued with a sinister life of their own. Their presence was a palpable weight, pressing down on us, suffocating us with an unseen terror. We were no longer alone in the cabin. Something was here with us, something that had been waiting in the shadows, watching and waiting. The air crackled with an unseen energy, 
a palpable sense of tread that clung to us like a shroud. The doll's eyes seemed to bore into our backs as we retreated, their silent scrutiny a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked within the cabin's walls. We have to get out of here, I whispered, my voice trembling. Alex nodded, his face pale and drawn. We turned and fled, the doll's eyes burning into our backs. The wind howled around us, carrying the echoes of their silent laughter. We stumbled down the stairs, each creak a jarring reminder of our vulnerability. The ground floor offered little solace, the shadows seemed deeper, the silence more oppressive. Just as we reached the bottom of the stairs, a new sound pierced the silence. A low, guttural growl, like an animal disturbed in its den, rose from the basement. The floorboards vibrated beneath our feet, the sound resonating through our very bones. What was that? Alex's voice was barely a whisper, his grip on my arm tightening. I swallowed hard, my throat dry. The basement, I managed, my voice hoarse with fear. Something's down there. The growl echoed again, louder this time, sending a fresh wave of terror through us. We knew we couldn't stay on the ground floor. We had to face whatever lurked in the depths of the cabin, or be consumed by the fear that gnawed at our sanity. With a shared look of grim determination, we turned towards the basement door, the darkness below beckoning us towards an unknown horror. The basement stairs groaned and complained under our weight, each creak a symphony of impending doom. The air grew thick, a suffocating blanket of dampness and the metallic tang of rust. The single, naked bulb hanging from the ceiling flickered erratically, casting long, dancing shadows that seemed to writhe and twist with a life of their own. Do you see anything? Alex's voice was a strained whisper, barely audible above the pounding of my own heart. I squinted into the darkness, my flashlight beam cutting through the gloom. Not yet, I replied, my voice tight. But I can feel something, watching us. A cold shiver ran down my spine, and I instinctively reached for Alex's hand. We descended the final steps, our boots sinking into the damp earth floor. The air hung heavy with an oppressive silence, broken only by the rhythmic drip of water from an unseen source. And then we saw it. A figure, tall and slender, stood motionless in the shadows. Its form was shrouded in darkness, its features indistinguishable. But we could feel its presence, a cold, malevolent force that seemed to suck the warmth from the air. Who's there? I called out, my voice echoing in the cavernous space. The figure didn't respond. It simply stood there, watching us with an unnerving intensity. I raised my flashlight, its beam illuminating the figure's silhouette. It was impossibly thin, its limbs elongated and skeletal. Its head was tilted at an unnatural angle, and its eyes, if it had any, were hidden in the darkness. A wave of terror washed over me, and I felt Alex's grip on my hand tighten. We were trapped in the basement with something, something inhuman. Something that had been waiting for us, lurking in the shadows, feeding on our fear. Who, who are you? Alex's voice cracked, the echo of his fear bouncing off the damp stone walls. The figure remained silent, its stillness a chilling counterpoint to our frantic breaths. The only sound was the relentless drip 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 of water, a metronome marking the passage of time towards an inevitable confrontation. We inched backward, 
our movements hesitant and clumsy. But the figure mirrored our retreat, its elongated limbs gliding across the floor with an unsettling grace. We need to get out of here, I hissed, my voice barely above a whisper. But before we could make a run for it, the figure raised its hand. In the flickering light, I saw the glint of metal, the sharp, serrated edge of a blade. A scream caught in my throat, my blood running cold. The figure's silence was more terrifying than any words could be. It was the silence of a predator, stalking its prey, savoring the anticipation of the kill. Please, Alex whimpered, his voice choked with terror. Don't hurt us. The figure tilted its head, as if considering his plea. Then, with a slow, deliberate movement, it took a step forward. The blade cleaned in the dim light, a promise of pain and violence. We were cornered, trapped in the belly of the beast. The darkness pressed in on us, the silence a suffocating weight. And the figure, with its silent menace and gleaming blade, stood between us and the possibility of escape. Adrenaline surged through our veins, fueling a desperate flight. We scrambled up the stairs, our lungs burning, our hearts pounding like war drums. The basement door slammed shut behind us, the sound echoing through the silent cabin like a gunshot. Barricade it. I shouted, my voice raw with panic. We heaved a heavy wooden table against the door, its legs scraping against the floorboards. The pounding from below intensified, each thud sending vibrations through the cabin, a relentless reminder of the horror that lurked beneath. It's trying to get out. Alex's voice was a choked whisper his eyes wide with terror. I scanned the room, my mind racing. The windows were boarded shut, their wooden frames warped and impenetrable. The front door, its heavy lock taunting us, offered no escape. We're trapped, I muttered, my voice heavy with despair. The pounding continued, each thud a hammer blow against our dwindling hope. The cabin, once a place of refuge, now felt like a prison, its walls closing in on us, suffocating us with its malevolent presence. We have to find another way out, Alex said, his voice surprisingly steady. There has to be something, a hidden passage, a secret room. His words sparked a flicker of hope in my chest. We couldn't give up. Not now. We had to fight, to find a way to escape this nightmare. With renewed determination, we began to search the cabin, our flashlights cutting through the darkness, illuminating forgotten corners and hidden spaces. The pounding from the basement continued, a relentless drumbeat that fueled our desperation. We were running out of time. We tore through the cabin like madmen, flinging open cupboards, yanking on paintings, desperation clawing at our throats. The pounding on the basement door grew louder, more insistent, a constant reminder of the horror that awaited us if we failed. There's nothing. Alex's voice was thick with despair, his breath coming in ragged gasps. We're going to die here. No, we're not, I insisted, my voice a harsh rasp. We're not giving up. I ran my hands over the bookshelf in the living room, my fingers tracing the spines of the dusty books. A thought flickered in my mind, a memory of a childhood game, a hidden compartment. With a surge of adrenaline, I shoved the bookshelf aside, revealing a narrow, hidden panel in the wall. It swung open with a rusty squeak, 
revealing a pitch-black passage that sneaked its way into the depths of the cabin. This is it. I exclaimed, a glimmer of hope piercing the darkness. Without hesitation, we plunged into the passage, the musty air closing in around us. The space was barely wide enough for us to crawl, the rough stone wall scraping against our skin. The only sound was the frantic pounding of our own hearts, echoing in the confined space. We crawled on, the darkness pressing down on us, the air growing stale and thick. The passage seemed to stretch on forever, twisting and turning, leading us deeper into the heart of the cabin's secrets. The passage finally yielded, opening into a small, moonlit clearing behind the cabin. We stumbled out, gasping for air, our lungs burning from the exertion and the oppressive atmosphere we just escaped. The cool night air was a welcome relief, but the pounding of our hearts echoed the relentless pursuit we'd left behind. Without a word, we sprinted into the woods, the gnarled branches reaching out like skeletal fingers, trying to ensnare us. The whispers followed, growing fainter but no less chilling. We didn't stop running until we reached the main road, our legs leaden and our lungs screaming for air. A pair of headlights pierced the darkness, and we waved frantically, our desperation a beacon in the night. The car screeched to a halt, and we tumbled inside, grateful for the sanctuary it offered. As we sped away, I risked a glance back at the cabin. Its silhouette, a dark stain against the moonlit sky, seemed to pulse with an unholy energy. I knew then that we'd made the right decision. Some secrets are best left buried, some darkness too profound to face. The cabin, once a place of cherished memories, was now a tomb, a monument to the horrors we'd witnessed. And as we drove further and further away, the cabin's secrets faded into the rearview mirror, leaving behind only the chilling echo of the whispers and the haunting memory of the doll's vacant stares. We'd escaped, but the darkness would linger, a constant reminder of the night we confronted the cabin's terrifying truth. The wind held through the trees, sending a shiver down Alex's spine. He gripped the steering wheel tighter, his knuckles turning white. The old jeep rattled and groaned as it navigated the treacherous dirt road that snaked its way through Blackwood Forest. The dense canopy of leaves overhead blocked out most of the sunlight, casting an eerie twilight over the landscape. Alex had been a park ranger in these woods for years, but he'd never ventured this deep into the heart of the forest. He'd always stuck to the Walmart trails, patrolling the areas frequented by hikers and campers. But today was different. Today, he was on a personal mission. It had all started with a cryptic online listing. A secluded cabin, nestled deep within Blackwood Forest, was being offered for rent at an unbelievably low price. The photos accompanying the listing were grainy and out of focus, but they hinted at a rustic charm that Alex found irresistible. He'd been feeling burnt out lately, overwhelmed by the constant stream of tourists and the endless paperwork that came with his job. The idea of escaping to a quiet cabin in the woods, even for just a few days, was too tempting to resist. He packed his jeep with supplies, enough food and water to last a week, a first aid kit, a flashlight, and his trusty ranger's knife. He'd also brought along a stack of books, hoping to catch up on some reading while he was away from the hustle and bustle of civilization. As he drove deeper into the forest, the road grew narrower and more overgrown. 
The trees pressed in on either side, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. Alex couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. He kept glancing in the rearview mirror, half expecting to see a pair of glowing eyes staring back at him from the darkness. He tried to push these thoughts aside, reminding himself that he was a trained professional. He'd face down bears and mountain lions in these woods. He could handle whatever the forest threw at him. But still, a knot of unease tightened in his stomach. The sun was beginning to set when he finally reached the end of the road. The cabin stood in a small clearing, surrounded by towering pines. It was even more rustic than the photos had suggested. The logs were weathered and moss-covered, and the roof sagged in places. But there was a certain charm to its dilapidated state, a sense of history and mystery that Alex found intriguing. He parked the jeep and stepped out into the cool evening air. The only sound was the gentle rustling of the wind through the trees. He took a deep breath, savoring the scent of pine needles and damp earth. For the first time in weeks, he felt a sense of peace settle over him. He walked up to the front door and tried the knob. It was unlocked. He hesitated for a moment, then pushed the door open and stepped inside. The inside of the cabin was a strange mix of old and new. Cobwebs hung in the corners, and a thick layer of dust coated every surface. Yet, the fireplace was neatly stacked with firewood, ready to be lit. A single, flickering candle on the kitchen table cast long, dancing shadows across the room. Alex's eyes fell upon a handwritten note lying beside the candle. The handwriting was elegant and slanted, each letter meticulously formed. It read, Solve the riddles, find the key, escape the night. A chill ran down Alex's spine. He let out a nervous laugh, trying to shake off the sudden unease that had gripped him. What is this, some kind of escape room, he muttered to himself. He assumed it was a quirky game left by the cabin's owner, a playful way to welcome guests. But as the sun dipped below the horizon, plunging the cabin into darkness, the playful atmosphere began to shift. The wind picked up outside, whistling through the gaps in the window frames. The shadows in the room seemed to deepen, taking on strange, elongated shapes. Alex tried to focus on the riddles, but his mind kept wandering. He couldn't shake the feeling that he wasn't alone. He kept hearing creaks and groans from the old house, sounds that he couldn't quite explain. He glanced over his shoulder, his heart pounding in his chest. The candle flame flickered, casting an eerie glow on the walls. He could have sworn he saw something move in the corner of his eye, a fleeting shadow that vanished as quickly as it had appeared. A primal fear began to gnaw at his confidence. The playful game suddenly felt much more sinister. The isolation of the cabin, the encroaching darkness, the cryptic note, it all combined to create an atmosphere of dread. He tried to convince himself that he was just being paranoid. But the feeling of being watched persisted, growing stronger with each passing minute. He found himself holding his breath, listening intently for any sound that might betray the presence of another living being. The silence was deafening. It pressed down on him, heavy and suffocating. He could hear the blood rushing in his ears, the frantic beating of his own heart. He knew then that he had made a mistake. He shouldn't have come here. He should have stayed on the well-lit trails, in the familiar territory of the park. 
but it was too late now. He was trapped in this cabin, alone in the darkness, with only the cryptic riddles and his own mounting fear for company. The silence was broken only by the ticking of an unseen clock, each tick a hammer blow on Alex's nerves. He paced the room, the floorboards creaking beneath his boots, his mind a whirlwind of anxieties. The note's challenge echoed in his thoughts, solve the riddles, find the key, escape the night. Escape? What did that imply? Was this just a game, or something far more sinister? His gaze fell upon an antique mirror hanging on the wall, its ornate frame reflecting the flickering candlelight. A strange inscription was etched into the glass, barely visible in the dim light. I have cities, but no houses, forests, but no trees, and water, but no fish. What am I? A riddle. A cold shiver ran down Alex's spine. He read the words again and again, his mind racing. The answer danced just out of reach, teasing him with its proximity. He paced faster, muttering the words under his breath, the rhythm of his footsteps matching the frantic beat of his heart. Suddenly, it clicked. A map! He exclaimed, the answer bursting forth like a revelation. He spun around, his eyes scanning the room. Above the fireplace hung a faded map, its edges curled and yellowed with age. He snatched it from the wall, his hands trembling with anticipation. The map was old, depicting the surrounding wilderness in faded hues. Alex ran his fingers over the parchment, searching for any hidden mechanisms. A faint click echoed through the silent room. He turned the map over, revealing a hidden compartment. Inside, nestled in a bed of velvet, lay a tarnished silver key. A surge of adrenaline coursed through Alex's veins. He had solved the first riddle, found the first key but a sense of unease lingered. The night was still young, and the cabin held more secrets, more challenges. He knew he was in a race against time, a race against the encroaching darkness and the unknown terrors that lurked within its depths. The key fell cold and heavy in his hand, a stark contrast to the warmth of the fire crackling in the hearth. Alex examined it closely, its intricate engravings catching the firelight. It was old, perhaps even ancient, and it seemed to pulse with a strange energy. He turned his attention back to the note. Solve the riddles, find the key, escape the night. Escape the night? A chill ran down his spine. What was he escaping from? He shook his head trying to dispel the growing sense of unease. Just a game, he muttered, his voice echoing in the empty cabin. It's just a game. But the words fell hollow, even to his own ears. The cabin seemed to hold its breath, waiting, watching. The wind held outside, a mournful sound that seemed to carry a warning. Alex knew he couldn't stay here, not with the darkness pressing in on all sides. He had to find the other keys, solve the remaining riddles. He had to escape. He gripped the silver key tightly, a symbol of hope in this increasingly unsettling situation. He glanced around the room, his eyes searching for any clues, any hidden messages. The cabin was a puzzle, and he was determined to solve it. I'm not afraid, he said, his voice firmer this time. I'm a park ranger. I can handle this. But even as he spoke the words, 
He couldn't ignore the prickling sensation on the back of his neck, the feeling that he was being watched. He was no longer alone in this cabin. Something else was here, something unseen, something waiting in the shadows. And it was hungry. The hair on the back of Alex's neck stood on end. He could feel eyes on him, watching his every move from the darkness. He spun around, his hand instinctively reaching for his ranger's knife. But there was nothing there, only the dancing shadows cast by the firelight. He took a deep breath, trying to steady his nerves. It's just my imagination, he told himself. There's nothing here but me. But the feeling of being watched persisted, a cold presence that seemed to seep into his bones. He forced himself to turn back to the task at hand. He had one key, but he needed more. He needed to solve the remaining riddles. He began to examine the furniture, running his hands over the rough wood, searching for any hidden compartments or inscriptions. He lifted cushions, peered under tables, and even crawled beneath the bed, his flashlight beam cutting through the dust and cobwebs. It was under a simple wooden chair that he found the next clue. Carved into the underside of the seat was another riddle. I am taken from a mine, and shut up in a wooden case, from which I am never released, and used by almost everybody. What am I? Alex sat back on his heels, pondering the words. The answer wasn't immediately obvious. He thought of coal, of diamonds, of other precious minerals extracted from the earth. But none of them fit the description perfectly. He closed his eyes, trying to visualize the riddle. A mine, a wooden case. The image of a pencil flashed into his mind. Pencil lead. It was made from graphite, which was mined from the earth and encased in wood. And it was used by almost everyone, from schoolchildren to artists to engineers. He jumped to his feet, excitement coursing through him. He rummaged through the drawers of a nearby desk, his fingers brushing against a small, velvet pouch. He pulled it out, his heart pounding. Inside, nestled in the soft fabric, was a graphite stick, its tip sharpened to a fine point. He held it up to the firelight, admiring its smooth, dark surface. It was more than just a writing implement, it was another key, another step closer to escaping this nightmare. Two keys down, one to go. Alex's breath hitched in his throat as he approached the cellar door. The final riddle was carved deep into the wood, its letters twisting and turning like the gnarled roots of an ancient tree. The more you take, the more you leave behind. What am I? Alex's mind raced, sifting through possibilities. The answer eluded him, taunting him with its simplicity. He ran his fingers over the inscription, feeling the cruise of each letter. And then, it hit him. Footsteps, he whispered, the answer echoing in the damp silence of the cellar. The more steps you take, the more footprints you leave behind. It was so simple, yet so cleverly hidden. His heart hammered in his chest as he reached for the doorknob. The cellar door creaked open, releasing a wave of musty air that sent a shiver down his spine. He hesitated, the graphite stick clutched tightly in his hand, a makeshift weapon against the unknown. He took a deep breath and stepped into the darkness. The cellar stairs groaned beneath his weight, each creak amplifying the silence that surrounded him. 
The air was thick and heavy, laden with the scent of damp earth and decay. He descended slowly, his flashlight beam dancing across the rough stone walls. The cellar was a labyrinth of shadows, each corner concealing potential threats. He could hear the drip, drip, drip of water somewhere in the distance, a constant reminder of the earth pressing down on him from above. He reached the bottom of the stairs and swept his flashlight across the room. The cellar was surprisingly large, its walls lined with shelves stacked high with dusty jars and forgotten tools. In the center of the room, a single candle flickered, casting an eerie glow on a series of strange symbols painted on the far wall. Alex's pulse quickened. He had found the final challenge, the last piece of the puzzle. But what did it all mean? And what awaited him when he solved it? The flickering candlelight danced across the cellar's far wall, revealing a series of intricate symbols etched into the damp stone. Alex's heart pounded in his chest. He recognized the markings an ancient cipher, once used by secret societies to conceal their knowledge. Of course, he breathed, a mix of excitement and trepidation in his voice. The final key. He knelt before the wall, the graphite stick clutched tightly in his hand. The symbols seemed to writhe and twist in the dim light, their meaning obscured by layers of time and secrecy. He began to trace the symbols carefully, the graphite leaving a faint trail on the cold stone. The silence of the cellar was broken only by the scratching of the graphite and the soft whisper of Alex's breath. He worked meticulously, his focus unwavering. The symbols began to take shape, forming words in a language long forgotten. As the message revealed itself, a cold dread washed over him. The words were a chilling warning. When the moon is full, the hunter awakens. Hide, or be hunted. Alex's pulse quickened. The hunter? What hunter? And what did it hunt? He looked up at the full moon hanging in the night sky, its pale light filtering through the small cellar window. A sense of urgency gripped him. He had to get out of this cabin, and he had to get out now. A bone-chilling howl echoed through the woods, a sound that seemed to tear through the very fabric of the night. It was a primal sound, filled with hunger and rage, a sound that made Alex's blood run cold. He scrambled up the cellar stairs, his heart pounding like a drum. He slammed the door shut behind him, the old wood rattling in its frame. He fumbled with the latch, his hand shaking so badly he could barely get it to catch. The owl came again, closer this time, followed by a series of heavy thuds that shook the entire cabin. Something was out there, something big and powerful, and it was coming for him. Alex threw himself against the door, barricading it with a heavy wooden table and a stack of chairs. He could hear the creature snarling and scratching on the other side, its claws tearing at the wood. The cabin groaned under the onslaught, its timbers straining against the immense force. He backed away from the door, his breath coming in ragged gasps. He was trapped, cornered like a rat in a cage. He glanced around the room, his eyes searching for any possible escape. But there was none. The windows were too small, the chimney too narrow. He was trapped. The creature's howls grew louder, closer. Alex could feel the vibrations of its movements through the floorboards. He knew it was only a matter of time before it broke through. Fear turned to desperation. 
He couldn't just stand here and wait to be slaughtered. He had to fight back, had to find a way to survive. He grabbed a heavy poker from the fireplace and gripped it tightly, his knuckles white. He took a deep breath, trying to calm his racing heart. He had to be ready. He had to be strong. The cabin shuddered again, the sound of splintering wood echoing through the room. The creature was getting closer. Alex braced himself, his eyes fixed on the door, the poker raised high. He would not go down without a fight. A deafening crash echoed through the cabin as the door splintered under the creature's assault. Alex barely had time to react before a monstrous form burst into the room, its silhouette filling the doorway. It was a hulking beast, its fur matted and thick, its eyes glowing with an unnatural hunger. Alex let out a strangled cry and swung the poker with all his might. The iron connected with the creature's shoulder, eliciting a roar of pain. But the beast was undeterred. It lunged forward, its claws raking at Alex's arm, tearing through his flannel shirt. He stumbled backward, his back hitting the wall. The creature advanced, its hot breath washing over him, its stench overwhelming. Alex knew he was no match for this beast. He was outmatched, outgunned. Desperation fueled his next move. He kicked out, his boot connecting with the creature's knee. It stumbled, momentarily distracted. Alex seized the opportunity and bolted past it, racing towards the stairs. He took the steps two at a time, his lungs burning, his heart threatening to burst out of his chest. He could hear the creature's heavy footsteps pounding behind him, gaining with every stride. He reached the top of the stairs and burst into the attic, slamming the door shut behind him. He fumbled with the rusty lock, his fingers numb with fear. The creature's snarls echoed through the thin walls, its claws scraping against the wood. Alex's eyes darted around the dimly lit attic, searching for a way out. A single, narrow window offered a sliver of hope. He threw himself against it, his shoulder aching as he forced it open. The window was barely big enough for him to squeeze through but it was his only chance. He wriggled through the opening, the rough wood scraping his skin. He clung to the window ledge, his legs dangling precariously over the edge of the roof. Below him, the forest stretched out like a dark abyss, its secrets hidden in the shadows. He took a deep breath and let go, dropping into the soft earth below. He rolled to his feet and sprinted into the woods, the creature's enraged roars echoing behind him. He didn't dare look back. He just ran, driven by a primal instinct to survive. Adrenaline surged through Alex's veins, fueling his flight. He plunged headlong into the dense undergrowth, the forest closing in around him like a suffocating blanket. Branches whipped at his face, leaving stinging welts, and his lungs burned with each ragged breath. But he dared not slow down. The creature's snarls echoed through the trees, a relentless reminder of the horror he'd left behind. He ran blindly, his feet pounding against the forest floor, guided only by instinct and the desperate hope of survival. He tripped over roots and stumbled over fallen logs, his body protesting with every jarring impact. But he pushed through the pain, his mind focused on a single goal, 
escape. The forest seemed to twist and turn around him, the trees taking on grotesque shapes in the moonlight. He imagined eyes watching him from the darkness, unseen predators lurking just beyond his vision. He could hear the creature gaining on him, its heavy footfall shaking the earth. Just when he thought his legs would give out, he burst into a clearing. The first rays of dawn painted the sky with hues of orange and pink, casting a soft glow on the dew-covered grass. He stumbled to a halt, his knees buckling beneath him. He collapsed onto the ground, his chest heaving, his body racked with sobs of relief. He had escaped. He was alive. As the sun rose higher in the sky, chasing away the shadows of the night, Alex slowly regained his composure. He looked back towards the forest, his heart still pounding in his chest. The memory of the cabin, the riddles, and the monstrous hunter would forever haunt his dreams. He had solved the puzzles, found the keys, and escaped the night. But at what cost? He had glimpsed a darkness he never knew existed, a primal fear that would forever change him. He rose to his feet, his legs shaky but determined. He had to get back to his jeep, back to civilization. He had to leave this place behind, bury the horrors of Blackwood Cabin deep within the recesses of his memory. But as he turned to leave, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was not truly alone. He could still feel eyes on him, watching him from the shadows of the forest. He quickened his pace, his heart heavy with the knowledge that some nightmares never truly end. The first rays of dawn pierced through the thick canopy of towering pines, casting an eerie glow on the moss-covered floor of the old-growth forest. Emily, a seasoned park ranger, walked the winding trail, her boots sinking into the soft earth. The air was heavy with the scent of damp wood and pine needles, and an unsettling silence hung in the air. A twig snapped behind her, the sound echoing through the stillness. Emily spun around, her heart pounding in her chest. Nothing but shadows danced between the trees. She shook her head, trying to dismiss the unease that crept over her. Just the wind, she told herself, but her grip tightened on her radio. As she continued her patrol, a sense of foreboding grew. The forest seemed to close in around her, the trees whispering secrets she couldn't understand. At the next rest stop, a lone backpack lay abandoned against a picnic table. Emily's brow furrowed. Who would leave their belongings unattended in this remote wilderness? She cautiously unzipped the backpack, revealing a worn notebook, a pen, and a trail map marked with a series of strange symbols. Emily's breath hitched as she recognized the name on the notebook, Alex, a hiker reported missing a week ago. Flipping through the pages, she read Alex's entries. The initial excitement of his journey gave way to a growing sense of fear and desperation. The final entry sent shivers down her spine. I think something's following me. I don't know what it is, but it's getting closer. I have to find a way out of here. Emily's blood ran cold. The forest suddenly felt alive watching her every move. The symbols on the map beckoned her, a trail of breadcrumbs leading deeper into the unknown. With a mix of trepidation and determination, she decided to follow them. Alex needed her help, 
and she wouldn't let him down. The symbols led her to a cliff edge, a dizzying drop into a shrouded abyss. A frayed rope dangled precariously, the only way down. Emily's stomach churned, but she knew she had to go. For Alex, she whispered, and began her descent into the darkness below. Emily repelled down the treacherous cliff face, her heart hammering in her chest. The abyss yawned below, a bottomless pit shrouded in mist. The only sounds were the creak of the old rope and the distant, eerie calls of unseen birds. Her boots finally met solid ground, and she let out a shaky breath. She found herself in a sunless ravine, a claustrophobic world of dampness and decay. Towering trees blotted out the sky, their roots twisting like monstrous serpents across the forest floor. A thick layer of moss and ferns carpeted the ground, muffling her footsteps. Alex, where are you? she whispered, her voice swallowed by the oppressive silence. The faint trickle of water caught her attention. She followed the sound, stumbling over gnarled roots and fallen branches. A small stream snaked through the undergrowth, its water dark and murky. Emily knelt down, splashing the icy water on her face, trying to calm her racing heart. As she rose, her eyes caught a glimpse of something on the ground, footprints. Fresh footprints, leading towards a hidden cave entrance concealed behind a tangle of thorns. Could Alex be in there? She wondered, a flicker of hope battling the tread that threatened to consume her. With trembling hands, she switched on her flashlight and stepped into the gaping maw of the cave. The air inside was cold and damp, carrying the faint scent of earth and something else, something ancient and unsettling. The passage narrowed, the walls closing in around her. Emily's flashlight beam danced over the uneven stone, revealing grotesque shapes and shadows that seemed to writhe and twist. The sound of dripping water echoed through the cavern, each drop like the beat of a morbid drum. Finally, the passage opened into a large chamber. In the center, a massive stone altar dominated the space. Atop it rested a weathered wooden box. Emily approached, her every instinct screaming at her to turn back. She lifted the lid, revealing another notebook and a single, folded letter. It was addressed to her. To whoever finds this, the letter began, Alex's familiar handwriting sending a shiver down her spine. If you're reading this, you've reached the end of the game. I hope you enjoyed it. I created it to test your courage and wit. But now, I realize I've made a terrible mistake. I shouldn't have come here. I shouldn't have disturbed what I didn't understand. There's something in these woods. It's not animal, not human. But it's alive. It's intelligent. It's cruel. And it's hunting me. If you want to survive, leave now. Don't look back. Don't trust the sounds you hear. And most importantly, don't let it catch you. The letter ended abruptly. Emily's hand shook as she reread the chilling words. The shadows in the chamber seemed to pulsate, the dripping water now a relentless, maddening rhythm. And then, a whisper, barely audible above the dripping. Emily. Emily whirled around, her flashlight beam frantically searching the darkness. There was no one there, only the oppressive silence and the shifting shadows on the cave walls. 
Emily. The whisper slithered through the air again, closer this time, sending a fresh wave of terror through her. Goosebumps prickled her skin. The shadows on the wall seemed to writhe and pulse, taking on monstrous shapes. Who's there? She shouted, her voice echoing through the cavernous space. Only silence answered her, a silence that felt heavy and expectant. Fighting back the urge to panic, Emily grabbed Alex's second notebook and flipped through the pages. I found it, Alex had written. A doorway to another world. A world of secrets and danger. I don't know what to do. I'm afraid, but I'm also curious. I need to see what's on the other side. The entry ended abruptly. Emily's mind raced. What doorway was Alex talking about? And what was the connection to the entity that hunted him? Driven by a desperate need for answers, she pressed on, deeper into the labyrinth and cave. The air grew colder, the silence more profound. The flashlight beam illuminated a series of smaller chambers, each more unsettling than the last. In one, she found the skeletal remains of some unfortunate creature, picked clean and scattered across the floor. In another, disturbing symbols were scrawled across the walls in what looked like dried blood. Finally, she reached a chamber larger than the rest. A deep, still pool of water filled the center, its surface reflecting the flickering light of her flashlight. Emily approached the pool, her footsteps echoing in the eerie silence. The water was so clear, she could see straight to the bottom. And there, nestled amongst the rocks, she saw it, a door. A submerged door, leading to who knew where. A cold sweat broke out on her forehead. She crouched down, reaching out a trembling hand to touch the door. It was icy cold, like the touch of death itself. A high-pitched giggle pierced the silence behind her. At last, you've arrived, a voice hissed. Emily spun around, but it was too late. A crushing blow to the back of her head sent her tumbling into darkness. A sharp pain throbbed at the base of Emily's skull. She slowly opened her eyes the darkness pressing down on her like a suffocating blanket. Her wrists and ankles were bound tightly, the rough rope biting into her skin. Ugh! She groaned, struggling against her restraints. The movements sent waves of pain through her body. I wouldn't do that if I were you, a chilling voice whispered from the shadows. Emily strained her eyes, but she couldn't see anyone. Who? Who's there? She stammered, her voice trembling. Someone who wants to play a game, the voice hissed. Welcome to the other side, Emily. A figure emerged from the darkness, tall and skeletal, its limbs elongated and unnatural. Its head was a featureless void, a black hole where a face should be. What? What are you? Emily asked, her voice barely a whisper. I am the guardian of this forest, the figure replied, its voice a raspy crawl. And you are a trespasser. I just wanted to help Alex, Emily pleaded. Alex broke the rules. He entered forbidden territory, and now he's paying the price. What about me? Emily asked, her heart pounding in her chest. What do I have to pay? That depends on you, the figure said, its voice dripping with malice. If you're clever enough, you might find a way out of here. 
but if not, it trailed off, leaving the threat hanging in the air. Emily's breath hitched in her throat. Let the games begin, the figure said, and vanished back into the shadows. Emily looked around desperately. She was trapped in a dark cave, bound and helpless, with something terrifying lurking in the darkness. A faint glimmer of light caught her eye. She strained to see, squinting into the gloom. A flickering candle sat on a small table across the room. Next to it, a piece of paper lay tantalizingly close. There has to be a way, she muttered to herself, scanning the floor for anything that could help her reach the table. A small rock lay just out of reach. With a surge of adrenaline, she inched her way towards it, using her bound feet to nudge it closer to the table. The rock bumped against the table leg, causing it to wobble. The paper fluttered to the floor. Emily dragged herself towards it, her heart pounding. It was a riddle. If you want to leave this place, you must solve this riddle, she read aloud. The first riddle, what has an eye but cannot see, wings but cannot fly, and a mouth but cannot speak? Emily's mind raced. She had to focus, to think clearly. Her survival depended on it. Emily's brow furrowed as she pondered the riddle. Her mind, still foggy from the blow to her head, struggled to grasp the answer. What had an eye but couldn't see, wings but couldn't fly, and a mouth but couldn't speak? A needle, she exclaimed, the answer suddenly clear. A needle has an eye at its pointed end, but it can't see. It has a hole for thread-like wings, but it can't fly. And it has a mouth to thread, but it can't speak. A click echoed through the chamber, and a small, hidden door creaked open, revealing a passage shrouded in darkness. Clever girl, Emily, the disembodied voice whispered, sending shivers down her spine. You've passed the first test. Relief washed over her, but it was short-lived. She crawled towards the door, her heart sinking as she realized her hands and feet were still bound. I can't go any further like this, she called out, her voice echoing in the oppressive silence. Patience, the voice hissed. Everything in due time. You must prove yourself worthy of freedom. Emily swallowed back her frustration and crawled into the passage. It was narrow and claustrophobic, the walls closing in on her. She inched forward, her hands scraping against the cold, damp stone. The passage opened into another chamber, dimly lit by a flickering candle in the corner. Emily's eyes scanned the room, taking in a wooden table laden with a bowl of water, a plate of fruit, and a gleaming knife. Food, she murmured, her stomach growling with hunger and thirst. She crawled towards the table, desperate to reach the water, but it was just out of reach. Solve the riddle, and you shall feast, the voice taunted. The second riddle, what has a neck without a head, and a back without a spine? Emily's gaze darted around the room, searching for the answer. A pile of discarded clothes lay in the corner, a bookshelf lined one wall, and a grotesque statue of a winged creature leered from a pedestal. A neck without a head, a back without a spine. She repeated, the words echoing in her mind. Suddenly, it clicked. The answer had been staring her in the face the whole time. A shirt, she exclaimed. A shirt has a neck but no head, and a back but no spine. 
Another click, and the ropes binding her wrists fell away. Emily scrambled to her feet, grabbing the knife from the table. With a few quick slashes, she freed her ankles. Free at last, she cried, a surge of adrenaline coursing through her veins. But her ordeal was far from over. She still had to face the guardian of the forest and solve the final riddle to escape this nightmare. Emily took a deep breath, the taste of freedom bittersweet on her tongue. She knew she couldn't let her guard down. The darkness still clung to the corners of the cave, and the guardian's presence lingered like a foul stench. She moved to the table, picking up an apple and taking a bite. The sweet yet tart flavor offered a small comfort in this nightmarish place. Her eyes drifted to the grotesque statue in the corner, its fangs and claws sharp and menacing. A shiver ran down her spine. There has to be a way out of here, she muttered, her voice barely a whisper. Alex must have found one. She began to search the room her fingers tracing the cold, damp stone walls. In a drawer, she discovered a box of matches, a single candle, and another of Alex's worn notebooks. The pages were filled with Alex's frantic scribbles, his fear palpable in every word. The nightmares are back, he'd written. I dream of something chasing me, a faceless, silent thing that stalks me through the darkness. I woke up in a cold sweat, my heart pounding. I know it's not just a dream. It's a warning. I have to get out of here before it's too late. Emily's stomach tightened. Alex had felt the same dread that now gripped her. She knew she had to escape to break free from this cursed place before it consumed her too. She tucked the notebook into her pocket and moved towards another door, its heavy wooden frame warped and decaying. The darkness beyond was absolute. Emily lit the candle, its feeble flame casting dancing shadows on the walls. A shuffling sound echoed from behind her. She spun around, the candlelight illuminating the skeletal form of the guardian. It glided towards her, its empty eyes burning with an unholy hunger. You thought you could escape me? Its voice rasped, sending a chill down her spine. Emily turned and ran, her heart thundering in her chest. The guardian's laughter echoed through the passage, a chilling symphony of madness. Emily's lungs burned as she sprinted through the twisting tunnels, the guardian's relentless footsteps pounding closer behind her. The darkness seemed to reach out, grasping at her heels. She risked a glance back, her heart leaping into her throat. The skeletal figure was gaining on her, its elongated limbs propelling it forward with an unnatural speed. You can't outrun me, its voice echoed through the tunnels, a chilling promise of doom. Emily's legs ached, her muscles screaming for rest, but she pushed herself harder. She spotted a fork in the path and veered right, her boots skidding on the damp stone. The tunnel narrowed, the walls closing in, the air thick with the stench of decay. A faint light flickered ahead, offering a sliver of hope. Emily surged forward, her lungs gasping for air. But as she drew closer, the light revealed a dead end, a small chamber with a single, barred window. She pressed her face against the cold iron, peering out into the abyss. The forest floor was a dizzying drop below. No escape, she whispered, her voice choked with despair. She turned to face her pursuer, 
the guardian looming in the doorway, its skeletal grin a mockery of her desperation. The game is over, Emily, it rasped, its voice a death knell. Emily backed away, her back pressed against the cold stone wall. There was nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. The guardian reached for her, its bony fingers outstretched like claws. Emily squeezed her eyes shut, bracing for the inevitable. A loud crack split the silence. She opened her eyes, her heart pounding. The guardian lay crumpled on the ground, a dark stain spreading across its chest. Alex stood over it, a makeshift club clutched in his hand. Emily, he shouted, his voice hoarse with urgency. Run! Without hesitation, Emily scrambled towards the window. She gripped the bars, her muscles straining as she hoisted herself up. Jump, Emily. Alex yelled from behind her. I'll catch you. She hesitated for a split second, then let go, plummeting into the darkness below. The wind whipped past Emily's face as she fell, the crown rushing up to meet her. She squeezed her eyes shut, her mind reeling. Suddenly, the impact came but it wasn't the bone-shattering crash she'd expected. Instead, she landed in a pair of strong arms, Alex's familiar scent filling her senses. I've got you, he exclaimed, his voice a mixture of relief and exhilaration. Emily opened her eyes, Alex's face a blur above her. Tears welled up, a mixture of terror and gratitude. Thank you, Alex, she choked out. Don't worry about it, he said, a weak smile spreading across his face. I'm just glad you're safe. They stared at each other for a moment, the weight of their shared ordeal hanging heavy in the air. Then, Alex's expression turned grim. We have to get out of here, he said urgently before it comes for us. They stumbled through the forest, following a hidden trail that Alex had discovered during his captivity. The trees loomed overhead, their branches twisting like the limbs of skeletal giants. Emily's heart pounded with every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig. Finally, they emerged from the oppressive darkness into a moonlit clearing. A calm lake shimmered in the center, its surface reflecting the starry sky. We're safe here, Alex said, his voice barely above a whisper. It can't follow us here. Emily collapsed onto the soft earth, her body shaking with exhaustion. The nightmare was finally over. What happened to you, Alex? she asked her voice raspy. He recounted his harrowing tale, the discovery of the hidden doorway, the encounter with the Guardian, the imprisonment in the subterranean labyrinth. I thought I was going to die there, he confessed, his voice thick with emotion. But then I saw you. I knew I had to save you. Emily's heart swelled with gratitude. She didn't know what she would have done without him. They sat in silence, the only sounds the gentle lapping of the waves and the distant calls of nocturnal creatures. As the first rays of dawn painted the sky, Alex spoke. We need to get back to the park, he said before anyone realizes we're missing. They retraced their steps, the forest now bathed in the soft light of morning. As they reached the edge of the woods, Emily glanced back. A shadowy figure stood at the tree lean, its empty eyes fixed on them. 
Emily's blood ran cold. The Guardian was still out there, watching, waiting. She turned away, her resolve hardening. She wouldn't let it control her anymore. She would return to her life, but she would never forget the horror she'd faced, or the courage she'd found in the darkness. Emily and Alex raced through the moonlit forest, their breath ragged and their hearts pounding. The trees loomed like skeletal sentinels, their branches reaching out like grasping claws. Emily couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched, that the Guardian's malevolent presence still clung to them like a shroud. We have to reach the main road, Alex gasped, his voice strained. Once we're out of the woods, it can't follow us. They pushed themselves to their limits, their legs burning with exhaustion. Finally, they burst out of the tree lean, the open road stretching before them like a lifeline. Emily collapsed onto the asphalt, her body racked with sobs of relief. We, we made it, she choked out. Alex offered a weak smile. Yeah, we did. They sat in silence, the cool night air soothing their sweat-drenched skin. A car's headlights appeared in the distance, growing brighter with each passing second. Alex waved his arms frantically, and the car screeched to a halt. The driver rolled down the window, his face etched with concern. Are you all right? he asked. We got lost in the woods, Alex explained. Can you give us a ride back to the park? The driver nodded, and they piled into the back seat. The warmth of the car and the hum of the engine were a stark contrast to the horrors they'd left behind. Back at the park headquarters, Emily's boss greeted them with a mixture of relief and anger. Emily, where have you been all night? I was worried sick. Emily recounted their ordeal her voice shaking as she described the Guardian and the terrifying events in the cave. Her boss listened intently, his expression growing grave. I'll send a search team to investigate the cave, he said. And I'll notify the authorities about Alex's disappearance. Emily nodded, a wave of exhaustion washing over her. She returned to her cabin the events of the night replaying in her mind like a macabre film. Sleep came fitfully, plagued by nightmares of the Guardian's skeletal grin and its chilling whispers. Even in the safety of her own bed, Emily couldn't escape the feeling that she was being watched, that the darkness was closing in. The next day, as she patrolled the trails, a familiar symbol carved into a tree trunk caught her eye. It was the same symbol she'd seen in the cave, a twisted spiral that seemed to writhe and pulse. It's back, she whispered, her blood turning to ice. She raced back to headquarters, her mind racing. The Guardian hadn't been defeated. It was still out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for its chance to strike. Weeks passed and Emily tried to reclaim a sense of normalcy. She went through the motions of her job, forced herself to socialize, but the fear lingered, a constant shadow in the back of her mind. Nightmares plagued her sleep, the guardian's skeletal visage haunting her dreams. Every rustle of leaves in the forest sent a shiver down her spine, every creak of her cabin in the night filled her with dread. One day, while on patrol, she stumbled upon a familiar sight, the twisted spiral symbol, carved into the bark of a tree. The same symbol that had marked the path to the cave, the same symbol that had haunted her nightmares. It's back, she breathed, her blood turning to ice. She raced back to headquarters, 
the forest seeming to close in around her, the trees whispering warnings she couldn't ignore. She relayed her discovery to her boss, who listened with a furrowed brow. I'll send a team to investigate, he assured her. You need to rest, Emily. You've been pushing yourself too hard. Emily nodded, but she knew rest was impossible. The Guardian was out there, and she had to be ready. She headed to the storage room, her hands shaking as she retrieved a shotgun and a hunting knife. The weight of the weapons in her hands offered a cold comfort. She spent the rest of the day practicing, the sharp crack of gunfire echoing through the empty woods. That night, sleep evaded her. She lay awake, listening to the wind howling outside, every creak and groan of the old cabin amplifying her fear. And then, a knock at the door. Emily's heart hammered in her chest. She grabbed the shotgun, her fingers tightening around the cold metal. With a deep breath, she opened the door. The guardian stood on her porch, its skeletal form silhouetted against the moonlit sky. A cruel smile twisted its lipless mouth. Missed me, Emily, it hissed. Emily didn't reply. She raised the shotgun, her hand steady. I'm not afraid of you anymore, she said, her voice surprisingly firm. The guardian let out a guttural laugh. We'll see about that. It lunged at her, its claws outstretched. Emily fired, the blast echoing through the night. The guardian stumbled, but it didn't fall. It lunged again, knocking the shotgun from her hands. It grabbed her knife, its touch sending a wave of icy cold through her. Emily screamed as the blade pierced her flesh. She crumpled to the floor, the guardian looming over her. You lose, Emily, it rasped. And now, you're mine forever. It reached for her, its bony fingers closing around her throat. But then, another gunshot rang out. The guardian's grip loosened, and it collapsed beside her. Alex stood in the doorway, the smoking gun in his hand. I told you I protect you, he said, his voice thick with emotion. Tears streamed down Emily's face as she looked up at him. She was safe. 